Hello and welcome to another 3D printing video. It's certainly been a long time since I've actually done a video. Last one was, uh, I think, right before school, or right with school as beginning. Uh, but my school year's been really busy. I'm a senior now, and I'm like doing drama, and I'm like helping out and volunteering stuff during the day during school. I'm homeschooled, and it's just crazy. And I haven't had much time to do videos. But I did do something really cool that I wanted to make a video about. And I also got a comment from one of my subscribers asking me if I'd give it up on my channel and told me not to, so I'm not going to. I hadn't given up, I had just gotten very, very busy. So, um, Halloween just came and went, um, and I decided that I would be Bane for Halloween. So I was. But it took, it took a very long process to get to that point. And I was going to 3D print my mask. That was the reason I was going to have that costume, the Bane costume, because I could have a 3D printed mask, that would be pretty awesome. I found a few models on Thingiverse, and I chose one, and I decided to 3D print it. But it didn't work. I had so many attempts, I was using um, my Monoprice printer, my Flying Bear printer. Um, weird stuff was happening, my Flying Bear kept breaking, and it keeps breaking. Um, but I ended up with a bunch of pieces that um, go, that are the mask. So right here, I have the back of the head which is actually, it, it's not bad, it's pretty nice for what it was. Then you have, then I have um, some extra large mouthpieces, um, some smaller mouthpiece, mouthpieces, but look at this, this stuff is, is terrible quality. If you just look at that, um, and yeah, I couldn't get over it. And then there's like a side mouthpiece here and a nose piece here. But the mask was too small. It was like, um, I don't know. I think that the mouth part minus the bottom could have fit on my face. But the, the total, the whole plastic top was not going to fit. So I scaled it up 120% uh, and printed this. And this is too big. And then um, uh, my 3D printer broke again. So the reason I was having terrible quality was because the nozzle had been being worn open. Um, my 3D printer had so much plastic would push through that it opened a 0.4 millimeter nozzle to 1.5 meter millimeters, not meters, millimeters, um, and that's a crazy, a crazy jump, and so it was terrible. And then once I fixed that, I tried to print the big stuff, and then one of my wires on my stepper motors popped off, and so I had lost that. It was like a day or two till Halloween. I was freaking out. So my dad's like, "Hey, I have an SLA printer, so well, let's try to print it on that." Um, resin is more expensive, so I was a little bit hesitant um, to do that, but I did it anyway. Or I let my dad do it, I guess. And um, he worked for hours and stuff working on this this model, trying to get it the, um, he added little pieces and stuff, and chopped it in certain areas, and the computer kept crashing, because we have an old computer that we got for Black Friday years ago. Um, but it just wasn't working, I mean, and so it took a long time. We finally got it printed, and this was also cutting close to Halloween. And we finally printed this. Boom. It's pretty epic, but there was an issue. We ran out of resin. The little vat of resin was all used up by the time it got done printing. Um, so it kind of tapered off at the top and wouldn't be a complete mask. So I was curing this. I was cleaning it. My dad was at work. He was trying to coordinate things um, through text messages. And we still had to print another piece. We're going to chop this off and take the new piece and put it on top, glue it, and then we're going to paint it and stuff. Um, but I finally put it up to my face. And I realized that it was like a literal gas mask. Resin has a lot of fumes. And this is hollow. And if you look, all those little holes, you can see through them a little bit, um, lead to the inside hollow area where there's trapped resin and uncured parts of the print that are, that are gassing off. And so I'm basically breathing all that in. So my dad's like, I don't want you to get brain damage. Um, this, we finally got to this point, like October 30th, um, we found out that this wasn't going to work, so we were going to do it from scratch. So we kind of panicked, and I stayed up for six more hours until mid, uh, 12.45, I think, at night, working on a mask from scratch. And so this is where the 3D printing part of the video is going to end, and the costume part of it is going to begin. Here is the mask. Um, this lighting situation is a little bit odd, but here's the mask. Um, this is like some wire covering stuff that I attached 
This is all pieces of foam. This stuff is thin stuff. Um, here's some more wire things that I ended up chopping up and painting a little bit. Um, this black part, um, the solid front part of the mask, was from lids that we cut. I painted it with acrylic paint. But here's an issue. Because it was cold that night, and I was breathing in the mask the whole time, my uh, breath was condensating and maybe me talking, I might have been spitting a little bit, which is kind of gross. But I think it was mostly for my breath and condensation, my mask was getting wet. And so if you look at the bottom, the paint was lifting off, and um, I had constantly had to wipe the bottom of the mask, it was pretty gross. But that's one thing to consider when wearing masks, when it's cold outside, it's going to condensate and it's going to start dripping. Um, so I want to think of that. And so I have this, I put Velcro here. Um, I didn't have much time to do anything fancy on the sides like in, um, in the movie, but I have Velcro here and some here, and that'll go on a mask. So now um, I'm going to show you the different components that I had to put together for the mask. So one of them, the next one, was a right-handed, um, this is actually left-handed, a right-handed wrist brace. It was leather in the movie, but you can make do with this. So one thing with costume making is that you're implying it to the audience. In, in many cases, so like for Halloween, you're going to be implying who you are. You can't make it exact because that's going to be hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Um, I did this for 50 bucks, which is still, I think, extreme. That was 50 bucks is a lot. But it was that much because I paid attention to what I was buying and I wanted everything that I bought to be able to be used later. Um, so, besides the mask, I couldn't really do much about that, but that was really cheap. That was like a total of probably like five bucks maybe um, not bad at all just six hours of time so I needed to imply it wrist brace was just plastic uh, fabric stuff like normally you get um, at a hospital or whatever maybe you could even buy it at Walmart for um, some money but my dad had one because he has carpal tunnel so he wears them he we used to wear them at night so I took his right-handed one and I wore that um, but this one I don't know where it was for, for this video I grabbed my my uh, brace I broke my arm about four years ago, and I'll just flip the video so it looks like it's on my right hand. Um, so that's one of the things you need. The next thing is a big leather jacket. Okay, so I went to Goodwill to look for some stuff. I was looking for a vest, I was looking for some boots maybe, and some good cargo pants. Um, but all I came out with was this super huge, large leather jacket. It only cost me $15, and these guys, these ones knew this brand. It's like hundreds of dollars. So this is a pretty cool buy that I got. Um, it doesn't fit me, um, but it implies what the character wore in the movie enough to give off the effect that I wanted. Plus it was gonna be cold at night, so I wanted to have a jacket that didn't look like a green hoodie or something. So I have the jacket. The next thing are the pants. He had cargo pants. I didn't have any of those, like black. My brother had some camo ones, but his were like a dark gray, dark brown, probably, um, or even black, with a bunch of pockets on them. So the best I could do is I went to the military surplus, and I got these guys. Can't even see them. They're like firefighter black pants, and I bought some pockets that I hot glued on there um, to add to the cargo pants effect, because these only had two po four pockets, five pockets. Six pockets, because I can count. They had six pockets. Two back, two side and then another down in the side, but none of them were obvious, so I wanted to put some more cargo into the pants. Next thing was a vest. So I needed to have a vest. Um, this one was going to be a challenge because I was wanting like an airsoft vest just to apply like his armored back brace vest because um, there's no way I could have done what he had. But we were just walking by and we found one of these for 15 bucks. And this goes on like this, but we turned it around and it, and it works more as a vest like that. Um, and that's the front part of it. That's his vest that works for that. And the next thing is a bunch of belts. You want belts um, so that you can attach the vest to your pants and then put two belts on top of that, um, which was also part of, I think, his back brace part of the, the, the vest that he had. The back, there was like some leather huge thing with a bunch of buttons and belts, things and stuff, but I didn't need that, I just wanted two belts to apply that because there's no way I could get that affordably while making it look real. And that was one of the things I wanted with this costume, I wanted it to look 
um, real. I didn't want like foam armor pads and stuff that looked like foam. If, they, if I was going to have armor, I wanted it to look like armor. If I had a vest, I wanted it to look like a vest, not a piece of tank top with um, Sharpie on it. So that's kind of why it also cost more for me. Um, so we got the, the pants, the coat, the vest, the belts, um, boots. He had military boots. I just grabbed my mom's hiking boots. Um, they were given to me, but they didn't fit me, but I, so I gave them to my mom. Um, but they still kind of fit me, so I asked for them back to borrow them, and they work good for that. Just tuck your pants into the boots if you can. Um, yeah, and then the last thing is knee pads. So he had knee pads. I don't have them right now. Uh, we just had some like rollerblading knee pads for kids. I sharpied out the white lettering and just put them on the pants and they looked great. There's one more thing that you need to do and that's shave your head. And I did that and it was like a week and a half ago, but I shaved my head bald and it was cold. But I did it for the costume and I think it was worth it, the total effect. So I'm going to get all this stuff on I'm going to show you guys. Okay, so I got the mask on, I got all the stuff on and besides the jacket, I'm going to show you. Boom, I got the mask. I shaved my head before, but it grew back. Um, so here it is. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, just a tank top underneath the vest, uh, your wrist brace, your mask, got your belts, got your pants, got your knee pads, your pockets, and I'd say that's, oh wait, and the jacket. Boom. Ah, it's crooked. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys dressed up as for Halloween and whether you think Bane or the Joker is better. Um, and I'll comment too what mine is. And to top off the costume is one more thing. Broken Batman mask. You can just carry this around. I used this in last year's Halloween costume um, as half Batman, half Joker. Go check out that video. But you can just walk around with this and um, you're set. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If um, you're interested in more, let me know in the comments. And always smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.